many scientists, including biologists, chemists, ecologists and amateur researchers, are concerned about what's changing in nature, and they are finding out what makes it happen. What they discover helps us maintain the nature we appreciate so much, so we can continue to wonder and enjoy. Professor Dubois was the owner of the estate De Grote Bedelaar, and it is still owned by his great-grandchildren. The area was initially a bare heathland, which he transformed into an impressive nature reserve through varied land and water planting. Serving as a physician in the Dutch army in Indonesia, Professor Dubois found at excavations on Java between 1889 and 1893 several bones and part of a skull, which he attributed to an intermediate form of the human race, which he named Pithecanthropus erectus. Java Man, the missing link. At the request of Professor Dubois, Nele Wieboud sampled the water from the Van de Bedelaar in 1912 to investigate the microlife in the water. More than a century later, in April and June 2016, this research was repeated by members of the Dutch Society for Microscopy and the Royal Antwerp Society for Micrography. Shown in the picture is the biologist Nele Wieboud, who was decorated in Amsterdam for her excellent and long-term contribution to hydrobiology. In one of the diaries of Professor Dubois, a hand-drawn map was found of the estate De Grote Bedelaar. At the back of the diary a letter was found, from Nele Wieboud to the professor. In this letter she lists the results of the research into the microlife in the Fan de Bedelaar in 1912. Dora de Kramer and Maria van Herk, the two biologists in our team, have evaluated these results. However, the results presented in June 1912 seemed very limited to them. Based on the bioindices of some of the approximately 30 organisms listed, it may be assumed that this was a moderate food-poor fan, with a low degree of contamination. In April and June 2016, Water samples were taken again with a tow net. Research with the aid of an inverted microscope resulted in more than 100 microorganisms, recorded on video. This video shows a selection out of this, accompanied by additional information. An amoeba is the designation of a type of organism a single cellular eukaryote, which can change shape by protruding and retracting pseudopodia, fake feet. Some amoeba have a protective shell around them, shell amoeba. Hairy backs are small flattened worms, without body segments. The mouth opening is surrounded with sensory hairs. According to a recent estimate, there are more than 600 species. Only some types of blue algae were found in the fan.
diatoms have an external skeleton of silica, silicon dioxide. They belong to the eukaryotic algae or to the phytoplankton. The class they belong to comprises about 10,000 species. Most diatoms vary in size from 10 to 100 micrometers. Diatoms provide about half of the primary food production in the sea. In the fan that was about 2 meters deep, the professor put all kinds of special plants. This he did from under a diving bell, which was held under water by a staff member. In this way, he had 7 minutes supply of air. When the oxygen in the diving bell was used, he emerged again. The thread algae shown here are green algae, or glorophyta. They are organisms closely related to the plants. They contain the same type of leaf green, chlorophyll B, the same pigments, starch as reserve food and cellulose cell walls. Most green algae live in fresh water as plankton or growing on substrate, though there are also types living in salt water. Green algae can occur as single cells in colonies or in differentiated form. Golden algae have a vegetable side and an animal side. Like plants, they use sunlight for their photosynthesis, consuming CO2 gas. But they can also feed with various types of algae and bacteria, including the infamous blue algae. It has recently been demonstrated that when the temperature is increasing, the rates of animal processes increase more than that of vegetable processes, resulting in more emission than consumption of CO2 gas, a greenhouse gas, and that is bad news for the environment. It was one of the challenges of the professor to transform the acid and food poor fan into a clean and food rich fan. His plans for the transformation included the addition of mineral substances. To that end he enriched the water with, amongst others, 8500 kg of lime mix, 1400 kg of phonolite flour, 1300 kg of phosphate and 100 kg of iron rods. Also dry wood was collected in winter and burned on the ice. The ash that was sunk was good for the desired water quality. As noted before, green algae can occur as single cells, in colonies or in differentiated form. Bell animalcules are protozoa that are about a tenth of a millimeter long and live in both fresh and salt water. There are several genera, Forticella being the best known. Bell animalcules live mainly on other single cell organisms, such as bacteria, which they blow in with vibrating hairs. They prefer to live in slow flowing water.
we call larval forms of crustaceans, in general nauplius. The larvae have a photosensitive organ, an ocellus. This occurs in numerous animal groups. The estate de Grote Bedelaar is located in the municipality of Leudal, just along the road that runs from the Napoleonic track to Heidhuizen in Dutch Limburg. In the neighborhood northeast of the estate is the Leudal Museum with a visitor center. Here one can discover the nature, heritage and history of the Leudal. Euclina species are often abundant in calm waters, where they can be present in such numbers that the surface of ponds and ditches can have a green or red color. Most Euclina species can feed autotroph by photosynthesis, just like plants, or heterotrophic, like animals. Like other Euclinoids, Euclina has a red eye spot. It is assumed that the red spot is not itself photosensitive, but there is a photosensitive structure at the base of the flagella. Goniostomum semen can cause nuisance through algal blooms and is known for allergic reactions in people who swim in lakes. Wheel animalcules or rotifers are small multicellular organisms. Most can be found on plant stems in fresh water. Their name means revolving, like a wheel. Their common feature is the fast moving vibrating hairs or cilia that cause a rotating and pumping effect that catches prey, especially bacteria and unicellular organisms. Every day the professor took a bath in the fan. He was a good swimmer and often interviewed students while swimming. These took place in his rowboat and he asked a question. Then he dived under the rowboat and expected the answer when he emerged again. Desmids, a striking species of algae, are always beautifully symmetrical and clearly recognizable under the microscope. They are good indicators for the purity of water. For most people, desmids are unknown because they are so small. The smallest species are approximately one hundredth of a millimeter in length and the largest about one millimeter.
desmids usually multiply, like here, by cell division. In 2016, five water samples were taken, one in April and four in June. This is 104 years later than the sampling done by Nele Wieboud. Water fleas are an important part of the ecosystem. They have a great ecological significance. The reason why water fleas are so important in nature is mainly because they are a rich food source for fish, but also for salamanders and insects, such as dragonfly larvae. Water fleas still have an important other function. They keep water clear, preventing massive algal growth. Water fleas are real indicators for water. In the event of lack of oxygen in the water, the water fleas become reddish. Ciliates are animal monocots with cilia on the cell wall. Cilia are actually relatively short complex flagellas that are present in large numbers. Ciliates have many different ways of living. They occur in the sea, in fresh water, on land or living together with animals. In a parasitic or commensal relationship. Catenula lemnae is a kind of flatworm. There are already thousands of species of nematodes or little eels described, of which more than half are parasitic and some of which are pathogenic. The total number of species is estimated at approximately 1 million. Nematodes have successfully adapted to almost every ecosystem. Heliozoa form a relatively small and less known group of organisms. So far around the world there are about 70 species known, most distributed in fresh water. Heliozoa feed on all sorts of microorganisms. One might assume that the protrusions on the periphery of this organism fulfill a protective function. For a ciliate, it seems at least a difficult task to work in such a sphere with hard spikes. Water in which heliozoa can develop optimally is usually shallow, clear, oxygen-rich, clean and richly overgrown. Heliozoa multiply by division. If we compare the results of 1912 and 2016, then we can cautiously say that there has been no major shift in the typing of the fan despite the measures taken by Professor Dubois and the long time passed since then. This could be due to the insulated location of the fan. 
there is no connection to other surface water, no serious influence of agricultural chemicals, and there is no polluting industry directly in the vicinity. Protective management by the owners of the fan is also a beneficial factor. Based on the data and taking into account the limitation of the sampling methods and the scientific sources, this acid fan has been slowly evolving into a slightly more food-rich fan. As far as the pollution level is concerned, the fan has become a little less clean. In more scientific terms, based on the data of April and June 2016 and the sources used, the water quality can be typed as oligo to mesoeutrophic and oligo to beta alpha mesosaprobe. This could be caused by the presence of more organic matter due to the strongly growing vegetation around and in the fan. Birds are also responsible for spreading plankton species and affect the composition of water through their feces. And what about acid rain? At the fan, just like the bedelaar, you will see shore plants, aquatic plants, insects and if you look well, there is much more. We have now seen that the water itself contains a lot of other life. With the aid of a microscope, you will observe that there is much more life in the water than what you can see with the naked eye. Thank you.